been been um doing for thousands of years now all of a sudden now that the, the scientists are doing the research and they're like they're proving it it's like most people are like yep we know that's been going on all this time um so there's a lot of stuff out there so my purpose for tonight is to just really get you excited about learning more about breath and i'll give you a, a couple different places you could go if after tonight you want to go further in depth and learn more about it. Um, there's a, I'll give you some places that you can go to get some more information. So my name is Brenda Van Alec. I'm here in Connecticut and I've been with Young Living um, for over 10 years. I actually think I might even be working on to like going for like 15 years, something crazy like that. Um, and I'm an exercise physiologist. I do uh, fitness therapy privately. I've been doing that for over 30 years. So I love how the body works and have always been interested in breath, especially working with um, uh, elderly people and trying to get them to uh, better their posture and better their walking gait. And a lot of that has to do with breath and just kind of opening everything up. And just recently, we just did a recording and put it out to the world of um, uh, riding, um, breathing your way to better riding, which is a fantastic video. It's done by, um, I'll give you the information at the end, but you don't even have to have a horse or so you don't even have to ride. Uh, Patricia that does the class with me does all these different face techniques and different exercises to open up everything in your body as well so it's just a lot more information with that as well so the first thing I want to do with everyone is just does everyone have a piece of paper and pencil yeah okay good because I want you to write down a couple notes um, I want everyone to just kind of breathe quietly, just for a moment or two, just kind of, you don't have to shut your eyes. You can shut your eyes if you want. I just want you to breathe quietly. And I want you to feel your shoulders and your chest. And I want you to just feel your breath going in and out. Don't try to change anything. Don't force a deep breath. Don't force using a certain part of your body to breathe. Just want you to breathe naturally and get in touch with how you're breathing right now in this moment. Okay. Write down a couple notes on how you feel your breathing was. Did you feel your breathing more up in your chest? Did you feel your ribs expanding? Did you feel, did you get claustrophobic the second you started thinking about your breathing? Oh, should I be breathing in now? Should I be breathing out? Um, just write a couple of notes. Because we'll come back to that at the end of the class. All right. Now, I want you to imagine right now that you're running up a really steep hill. You're running and you have about 500 feet more to go. It's a really, really steep, steep hill. You're running as hard as you can and you feel like you're about to collapse, but you know you can make it to the top. Imagine right now that you're doing that. Imagine how you're breathing. Just envision that. Are you breathing with your mouth open or are you breathing through your nose? Are you going <laughs> as you get to the top or are you breathing through your nose? How many here were breathing through their mouth as they got to the top of that mountain? Okay, good. How many of you are breathing through your nose? Good, excellent, okay. Now I want you to envision yourself passed out on the couch, head tossed back, sound asleep. 
just passed out, dead to the world, sound asleep, middle of the night, exhausted. Picture yourself doing that. Is your mouth opened or closed? How many people have their mouth opened in that vision? Oh, you all had your mouth closed while you're passed out to sleep on the couch. Okay. All right. How many here snore? No snores. Couple snores. This, this is like sort of goes up. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I want you to right now take a really quick, sharp, deep breath in. Mm. How many just did it through their mouths? Right. Okay. All those things should be done through your nose. All those things should be done through the nose. And that's going to be a big part of tonight's talk is breathing through your nose. Um, most people might have never given a second thought about how they breathe. And there are many benefits to nasal breathing. And we're going to delve into that of the different health benefits tonight. And we're also going to delve into how the oils can help us um, better at getting those deep breaths in. And for most, mouth breathing has always felt more natural and the easiest method for taking a, especially like a deep breath in. And we're going to learn to change those habits and having breathing coming in, breathing through our nose. Um, become more normal. So let's all take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out. How many of you just breathed out through your no mouth? Huh. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your nose. Both directions. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your nose. So a lot of times when you first are starting to learn to breathe through your nose, you're going to feel like you're not getting in enough oxygen. And I'm not going to delve into this right now um, in this class, but you actually are breathing in way more oxygen than your body can ever absorb. We only absorb about 40% of the oxygen we breathe in, even if you breathe in very shallow. And breathing through your nose actually increases the oxygen level in your brain and your body by 10 to 20 percent. So it's funny when people start breathing through their nose, some people, especially if you're used to breathing through your mouth, you feel very claustrophobic and you feel like you're not getting enough air in and you feel like you, you're you're gasping. You want to open up your mouth and gasp for air. But it's just, you got to just train your body that everything is okay and to trust that you have enough oxygen into your body and that you're actually getting more oxygen by breathing through your nose than you are through your mouth. All right, I'm going to do one more test before I get into a little bit more information. I want you all to block your right side of your nose and I want you to breathe in only through your left. Let's do a couple breaths through your left nostril. And now do block the other side and breathe strictly through your right nostril. And if you want, you can write down a little note of which side was easier for you to breathe through. All right. And I lied. We're going to do one more test. <laughs> Some of you, did everybody use oils already? Yeah, of course. We're all oilers here. So we already got our oils out. So what I want you to do is when I say go, I'm going to have you breathe in for, five, for a count of five. I'm going to get my little stopwatch going here. Oops. And then you're going to breathe out for a count of five. There's going to be a slight little hold whoops where's my stopwatch um 
in between, but not much. So you're basically going to be breathing in for five, breathing out for five. And I want you to think of it as just being a nice circle of breathing in and breathing out. There's going to be a slight pause in the middle, but that is it. And it's only going to be breathing through your nose. All right. So let's go. You're going to breathe in two, three, four, five, and out. Two, three, four, five, and breathe in. Two, three, four, five, and breathe out. Two, three, four, five, couple more. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, and breathe out. Two, three, four, five. All right. Did anybody feel like that was too long of breathing in and breathing out? Did you have a hard time staying with that? Everyone did pretty good. Okay, good. That is perfect breath. About five and a half seconds breath in and five and a half seconds to breathe out. Works out miraculously about five and a half breaths per minute and gets you in five and a half liters of oxygen in a minute, which is exactly what our body needs. So during the day, if you feel stressed, that is a simple, great breathing exercise to get yourself back into rhythm of breathing that five seconds in and five seconds out through the nose. And we'll come back to those exercises at the end. So nose breathing, I said, increases the oxygen by 10 to 20% but it also helps reduce stress compared to breathing through your mouth. Um, it reduces the feeling of stress and anxiety. Um, it doesn't have to, you know, we don't have to be that stressed in our life. We have ways to help us with that. And breathing is one of them through the nose. And men in particular have been known not to handle stress very well. Um, and there's studies out there of men breathing, nasal breathing of reducing stress that works better than medications that are out on the market and combine that with oils, combine it with your stress away, your peace and calming. Um, it's just twofold when you do that. Breathing through the nose also improves lung function. When you breathe through your nose, the passageways act as a filter and it humidifies the air coming into the body, protecting the lungs from receiving any kind of irritants, any kind of unwanted germs from reaching them. One of the benefits of nasal breathing is that it encourages deeper breaths as well. And it reaches the lower part of your lungs. Most people very rarely empty out the lower part of their ribs, their lungs, I should say. And that's where a lot of this gunk and everything kind of settle in. And where breaths start becoming shallower and shallower and shallower. And breathing through your nose actually encourages your body to take deeper breaths and reach lower down into your lungs and um, it fully engages the diaphragm. So most people, when you say dive, you know, to breathe and use your diaphragm, um, they do nasal and mouth breathing with that. And you're actually way better off doing nasal breathing both in and out to really activate that diaphragm. Um, the nasal breathing also encourages the creation of nitric oxide, which relaxes and dilates the airways in your lungs and it improves the airflow and it improves the oxygen absorption. So just that of breathing through your nose, you're gonna lower your stress, you're gonna activate your diaphragm, 
you're producing more nitric oxide, which improves your airflow and oxygen absorption. Now with the improved diaphragm, um, one is gonna get stronger. So you're gonna be able, especially if you wanna be doing exercise or anything like that, having a nice strong diaphragm is gonna be able to get you pull more air in and be more efficient with your breathing. But it also stimulates the vagus nerve. And that, encour that encourages relaxation and lowers tension which goes right back up to that's why it helps reduce your your stress levels so everything just kind of is almost like that that five second circle breath everything is connected you're increasing your nitric oxide which is increasing the amount of oxygen you're getting in it relaxes and um, dilates the diaphragm which now activates the vagus nerve, which now you have better digestion because of that and you have better relaxation. And because you have better relate relaxation, now you have better heart health. So it's all interconnected all together. Um, and we just mentioned digestion. The And we'll kind of come back to this a little bit, but nasal breathing can help reduce the stress, um, which helps activate the parasympathetic, um, parasympathetic nervous system, um, which again, helps us with the digesting of the food. And we can, I'll get into it a little bit in a couple minutes about how we can control that by what side of the nose we're breathing into. So don't let me forget to tell you guys that because it's kind of a neat a neat little trick there. So because breathing through the nose engages the diaphragm, um, and that's a huge factor in allowing the body to become relaxed, it promotes the production of digestive enzymes, which helps enhance the blood flow to the digestive organs. And um, we covered a little bit on how the nasal breathing can help reduce the stress, which also helps with your digestion. But another thing that breathing through your nose does is not only helps oxygenate the body, but it can help improve your brain's cognitive function. So when you breathe through your nose, it releases, like I said, the nitric oxide, right? Which encourages vasodilation and that improves, which improves the blood flow to the brain. And the more oxygen and nutrients that we could get delivered by the increase of blood flow improves our cognitive function and which improves our mental clarity. So breathing does a lot. Other benefits of nasal breathing, it includes the rhythmic pattern that the nose breathing creates which synchronizes the brainwave activity. And you'll notice that sometimes, especially if you're really good at meditating, because meditating tends to get you naturally into that five second breath in and breath out. And that gets you into this rhythmic pattern, nose breathing, and it synchronizes your brainwave activity, which improves your, your memory, your concentration, so you can improve your respiratory and cognitive health just by using nose, by nose breathing. Um, nose breathing also will help your dental health. I think this is really neat. A lot of um, native people, they, from the day that um, babies are born, the mothers will pinch the lips closed. After, right when they're done eating, right when they're done suckling, they'll pinch the nose closed. When the baby is sleeping, they'll pinch the nose closed. Anytime, anytime that child opens up its mouth to breathe, they pinch the nose closed with their fingers to train, to teach the baby to breathe only through the nose. And many Native Americans, like a long time ago, used to think that um, when the, the white people came, that people that they didn't want to smile 
and when they're taking pictures because they were released some spirits and stuff like that and it was actually because for for a lot of them they don't open mouth smile because they're afraid of the air coming in that's how important it is for them to always be breathing through their nose they hardly ever have their mouth open and they truly believe that is for better health and longer life and a really interesting thing is is that they have perfect teeth they have perfect teeth and the reason for that is that there when you breathe through your nose your tongue will actually rest properly up on the palate and that encourages you to have a wider base in your of your mouth which gives you more room for your teeth so you don't get they don't get crooked teeth their teeth stay straighter us as humans uh i should say us as humans um as we have progressed because we used to be a long time ago much better but as we've progressed um you know most people have their wisdom teeth removed uh they've had a lot of teeth removed as children and they our mouths have gotten smaller so we actually are making breathing much more difficult for ourselves and we tend to be more of a mouth breather because of that and mean if you are a mouth breather you actually you get um, bad breath because you're breathing through your mouth all the time and your mouth gets dry so you don't have saliva and a saliva has the enzymes in it that break down all the bad bacteria in your mouth. So you want to have your mouth closed and breathing through your nose. So those are just some of the benefits of breathing through your nose. And um, there's, there's lots and lots and lots of them. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about more specifically with nose breathing is the right and no right and left side of the nose now how many of you had one side that was easier to breathe through when we did that little test in the beginning yeah how many of you had an easier time breathing through your right nostril okay has anyone here done the nostril breathing of breathing from one side to the other forcing yourself to breathe through one side and switching to the other. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are going to be doing that exercise at the end, but the right nostril, when you breathe through your, you we fluctuate all day, all night. We'll breathe a little bit through our right side of our nose and then it'll fluctuate and we'll breathe more through our left. It's a natural fluctuation from right to left side. There are some studies that are starting to show that it is affected um, by hormones. So for women, it changes more right and left depending on where we are in our cycle. We'll always switch back and forth throughout the day, but some, during some parts of the cycle, you're more on one side than the other. And it also is affected by the, the moon cycles and um, how close the sun is to the earth and back on how, which side we tend to breathe more on. But if you tend to breathe more through the right side of your nose, or if you force yourself to breathe through the right side of the nose, just realize that's more of the gas pedal for our body. When we breathe through the right side of the nose, we're inhaling primarily through this channel, the circulation, our circulation actually speeds up when we're breathing through on the right side of our nose. And the body will get hotter, our cortisone levels will get higher, our blood pressure will get higher, and our heart rate will get higher all during while we're breathing through the right side of our nose. And this happens because when you're breathing through the right side of your nose, it activates the sympathetic nervous system. That's your fight and flight. And that what puts the body into a more elevated state of alertness and readiness. Breathing through the right nostril also feed more blood 
to the opposite hemisphere of the brain. So it's when you breathe through your right side of your nose, you're feeding more blood over onto your left side. And that is mostly up in the, the prefrontal cortex. And that is associated with your logical thinking, your decision-making, your language, your computing. So you can actually kind of play around with this if you really need to be concentrating on something, studying something. You could sit there while you're reading or studying and holding the right, the left side of your nose closed and force yourself to breathe through the right. And that will actually activate more of that thinking. Now, just the opposite, if you find yourself as being really stressed out and kind of in that fight and flight mode and you need to calm yourself down, you're not gonna hold your left side nostril and breathe through your right because that's just gonna make it even worse. So the trick to that is you would hold your right side of your nose and have yourself be breathing through the left nostril because inhaling through your left nostril has the opposite effect. And it works as kind of a brake system to the right nose, to your right nostrils accelerator. So your left nostril is more deeply connected to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and your relaxed side. It lowers your blood pressure. It cools the body. So all this hot weather right now that most of us in the world here are dealing with, we want to be breathing through the left side of our nose to help cool our body down. It helps us reduce anxiety. Left nostril breathing also shifts the blood flow to the opposite side of your brain. So now it's going to be going over onto your right side. And that influences your creative thoughts and plays a role in the formation of like mental abstractions, like just kind of thinking outside the box. Um, and there's been a lot of studies on that of going, breathing from your right side to your left side. So basically your, your kind of your go, 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 go is through your right side and more of your calming, relaxing is through your, your left nostril with your, right nostril closed. Um, oh, I have to find something in my notes here because I know, oh, there it is. Hey, Brenda, yeah. your, your, your camera turned off. My camera turned off. Ah. There it goes. I moved my oil. <laughs> I must have hit it with my hand. <laughs> um, the other thing of, because I want to kind of keep on this, this idea of going um, kind of back and forth with your breath. We just talked about right side, left side with your nostril, but with our breathing in and breathing out, there's also a, a rhythm with that as well. So when you are breathing in, that is your sympathetic that's your fight and flight so when i had you take that <gasps> deep breath in right i mean that's like you hear somebody go <gasps> like i actually i was driving my mom today this is a perfect example i was driving my mom and she was looking down on her phone looking something up and somebody on the highway cut in front of me so they have, i had plenty of room but it went from me and i hit the brake and she went <gasps> like that <laughs> and that's you breathe really quickly in right? So that is your fight and flight. When you breathe in, that's your go. That's we're going. And when you breathe in, it'll increase your blood pressure. It'll increase your heart rate. It'll increase ox oxygen uptake, obviously. And it just it gets you ready to run. And when you breathe out, that will lower your blood pressure. That will lower your heart rate, gets you in the um, parasympathetic mode and it's your rest area so when when we do after we talk a little bit about oils when we do some of the um, some more of the five second breaths of slow breaths 
some people will find that they actually have a harder time breathing in for five seconds. Like they, they're like, they get to three or four and they're like, all right, I'm ready to breathe out. Those people tend to be a little bit calmer because they, their cycles are longer with the breathing out. And then people who can breathe in really deep, but when they start breathing out, they're like, uh, -uh I can't breathe out anymore. I have to breathe back in again. Those people tend to be more stressed and more in that fight and flight. So that's another area that when you're sitting quietly, kind of thinking about your breath, not only can you think about if it's right or left side of your nose easier or harder to breathe through, but is it easier or harder to let go of your breath long or breathe in breath long? And we want to try to balance that out. And again, that's why that five second breath in and out is really, really, really important. Um, having it balanced, you get in this homostasis and you could go either way, whichever way your kind of life is going, you can be more flexible and it actually balances your, it helps with balancing your pH and your body too, just by controlling your breath with that five second in, five second out. So it's kind of neat stuff. So how many people have some oils right next to them? Everybody. All right. Let's see some of those oils. Let me see what color, what, what oils we got. All right. Nice. Was that juniper? Did you get juniper or Yvonne? Was that juniper? No, this is inspiration. Oh, inspiration. <laughs> nice. I saw the blue. So I'm like, oh, uh, is that a big bottle inspiration? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 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 it is it is one of my here. it was it was my coveted one from my stash it's why and you always have a stash jelly jelly over here so i got my brand new bottle of northern lights black spruce this stuff is like my favorites so i think all of you on here have definitely seen you know the the image of the trees compared to lungs has everyone seen that image and so think of that when you think of your oils it's so so true your tree oils are going to be the ones that are really going to help your lungs and when you're using oils everyone i think we all here know you breathe it in through your nose and it's going into your olfactory and it gets into your into your brain and it changes your your behaviors and your emotions and your mental state and but we're using oils through our nose and into our lungs tonight so just kind of think of that whenever you're using your oils it's not just going through your nose and your olfactory it's actually going into your lungs and you are absorbing them in through your lungs as well and some of the um, favorite oils to do that are your tree oils, like your balsam fir oil, your um, black spruce, your blue spruce, um, blue cypress, um, balsam fir, your pine, evergreen essence. That's a great one because it's just a good combination of all the goodness. Your juniper. Um, and one kind of on the side that works really well for lungs and to help with your breathing is your helichrysum. And not many people think of helichrysum for that, but it is an anti-inflammatory and it, it has some, um, expert properties so it'll help you get rid of especially if you have a lot of asthma issues if you feel like you're congested if you have trouble breathing deep into your lungs 
and getting into those lower lobes when you're doing your breath exercise, give helichrysum a try and see how that works for you. It is well known to help with respiratory health. Um, it helps promote and clear the airways. It's, I, I've been so surprised on how, well, I shouldn't be because Hill is like one of my favorite ones. It's like it's the people that like Diane on here knows I have like, I have safe oils, like oils that I keep in my safe and helichrysum is one of those. <laughs> I love it, but it just has surprised me so much on how it's helped clear my lungs and getting me, getting me to breathe so much deeper. And it, I think for me, it really helped clear up a lot of the, the mucus. Um, I was pretty sick a couple of years ago, and I think I had a lot of that kind of built up and I could never really get rid of it. And a lot of the oils helped clear everything up here in my nose and my upper chest. But it wasn't until I started using the helichrysum that it got really kind of deep down in there. So definitely pull that one out. If you or you know somebody um, who needs some help with with lung function and getting kind of deep down in there, essential oils, um, you know, have been used for so so much, and the properties range from being antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory. They can provide relief, easier breathing. Um, especially in a cold and flu season. And it's not, I, I just kind of want to get to the point that it's, it's not just from the nose. It's not just clearing up through here. Um, and that's kind of why I pulled out the tree oils because most people like when they're like feeling congested, they instantly go more for the, the mint, the peppermint, the spearmint, the, win the winter green, um, even like but I consider that, and even winter green's a tree too, um, they tend to clear more up here in your sinuses and your nose. Whereas the tree oils are gonna get more down into your lungs. Um, the uh, balsam fir oils, um, and, and actually balsam fir, your black spruce, they have the pinenes in them, the B pinenes, the A pinenes, um, which help clear out the airways. So any of those oils are going to be a great one to pull out for you. So I want you all to just take one of your oils and put them in your hands and get some good deep breaths in. Because I want you to, we're gonna do a couple of those exercises again for a little bit longer period. And I want you to see if you notice a difference. And while you're kind of breathing in those oils, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of these little jobbies here. Does anybody else have one of these? The nasal inhalers? Has anybody seen these nasal inhalers? These, if you have trouble with breathing or you know somebody, especially like in the spring season with allergies, but the reason why I really, really love these, I'm trying to open mine up right now so I can show you is the right left nose breathing. So in, inside of the holder, they have a jar that you put your oils in and it has a little foam piece that goes in it. So you'll have your oils in there and the top goes on and it has some holes on it. And it goes in, into the nice little holder. So you can kind of have this in your purse, but the nice thing about it is you can hold it to one side of your nose to kind of activate that one side of your nose. So if you have 
really a lot of congestion in your right side and you'll feel like you're always breathing through that left, you can concentrate of having the oils just going through the right side of your nose. Now, the other interesting thing about this is what did I say about breathing through the right side of your nose? It goes to this side of your brain. Breathing through your left nostril goes to the right side of your brain. So you can play around with these, not just with your tree oils and your breathing oils, but you can play around with these in some of your um, more emotional oils. So like I said, your right, if you're breathing through your right, it's going through the side of your brain, which is more of your thinking side, right? So maybe genius would be a good one to breathe through your right side of your nostril. Um, frank, uh, frankincense, any of those oils. Your calming oils go on to your left side of the nose. Any of you who have horses, it's the same exact thing. Right side of the brain, left side of the brain, nostrils. Same with dogs. It's a little bit harder with dogs because their noses are so sensitive and they're really kind of close together. But the inhalers work great for horses if you want them to really concentrate on one side or the other on the brain. It's really, really kind of neat to play around with. You can get these. They usually come in a set of like six or eight on Amazon. Um, and they have, there's all different kinds. They're really nice. How many, of the, how many people have these? Yeah. Yvonne's the only one. Me and Yvonne. I think Diane has them too. She probably just went to try to find hers. <laughs> she disappeared. All right. So let's do a couple breathing exercises. What do we have for time here? I don't want to. Yeah. Let's do a couple breathing exercises. The first one that we're going to do is strictly the five second breath. Super simple, easy. I'm going to, I'm not going to count out loud for you like I did the first time. I'm just going to say switch. So that way you can just go from your breathing in to your breathing out. And we're actually going to do this for a full two minutes. And if you feel any kind of tingly going on in your body, body temperature change, that is all perfectly normal. Because for some people, they're just are not, their body's not used to doing it this way. And it's pretty amazing that the changes that you can have just by practicing this for a couple minutes a day. All right. Is so everyone ready? Get kind of comfortable and start. Breathe in. Switch. Switch. And switch. Switch, 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 and switch, and switch. So you guys keep going back and forth and kind of counting your head. Nice, slow five in. Slow out. And breathe in. Good. Keep going with that breath. Make it a nice circle. Slowly going in. Slowly going out. Very, very short pause in between.
Keep going. Couple more breaths. Good. And stop. Did anybody notice anything that they want to share with that when they were breathing like that? Is it difficult one way or the other? I used to find that it was really difficult to breathe out for that long of a time. <laughs> I just couldn't wait to breathe back in again. Anybody feel that way? A little bit? Yeah. Okay. So the next one that we're going to do, and that, believe it or not, just simply doing that for a couple minutes a day will improve everything that I just said. It'll improve your digestion. It'll improve your stress levels, reduce your stress levels. It reduces your blood pressure, your heart rate very quickly, just doing that for a few minutes. If you go into the doctor's office and you tend to be the one that when you go in there, your, your blood pressure goes up just because you're going to the doctors before they come in, you know, the nurse will bring you in and then they leave for a little bit, do that five second breath in and five second breath out. And when they come in, your blood pressure will be back down to where it should be. So let's do another one. So we're going to do the breathing in through your nostrils controlled. So you're going to take your thumb onto your right side and then your uh, index. No. Finger next to your pinky. <laughs> On your the ring other side, finger. The ring your finger. Ring finger. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have a ring <laughs> on. So, you know, that's why I got lost there. I'm like, wait a minute. And then some people just put their other two fingers right up on their forehead. You can do that. Um, some people will use two fingers on either side. That's fine too. It's up to you. So the interesting thing with this is a lot of people will like breathe in through one side and then out and then switch and breathe in and breathe out and then switch and then breathe in and breathe out. That's not the proper way to do it. You're going to be breathing in through one side and then you're going to breathe out through the other side and then breathe in through that side. So it's actually not a breathe in and out through one side, it's a breathe out and in through one side. Does that make sense to everybody? Cause I kind of got confused on that in the beginning. So you start with one side only once and then you get the rhythm going back and forth. And um, what else can I tell you about this? If you feel like you're really stuffed up on one side, Try your best to keep going with it. And even if you're not able to take in a full breath on that side, try to relax into it, knowing that within a couple seconds, you're going to go over to the other side and get that breath in. That few seconds of not getting a lot of air in is a-okay. There's actually a lot of... Um, breath exercises we're not going to do them today of like breath holding and withdrawing as much breath as you're taking in as a way to improve your breathing because you're stressing your body and your body learns how to absorb more oxygen from what you're breathing in so when you breathe in, you're getting more in. It's kind of like altitude training. We're training in high altitude. It's the same exact, kind of has the same exact effect as that. Um, but I, I say this because some people get a little bit nervous. They're like, oh my God, I can't breathe. I'm stuffed up. And they start getting anxious. Again, you have way more oxygen in your body that you've taken in and those little puffs than your body actually needs. So. Let's try this breathing. I will I will walk you through it. So you're going to block your noses. I'm not because then you won't be able to understand what I'm saying. So you're going to block one side. Let's all start with blocking our left side. So block your left side. You're going to breathe in. 
switch, breathe out. Breathe in, switch, breathe out. Breathe in, switch, breathe out. We're going to add a hold to this. Breathe in, switch, breathe out. Hold both noses. Switch, breathe in. Breathe, switch, breathe out. Hold. Switch, breathe in. Switch, breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Switch, breathe out. Hold. Switch, breathe in. Switch, breathe out. Hold. Go a couple more cycles like that. Good. And relax. Anybody want to share anything about that? You could unmute yourself or you can type or you can type it up. Either or. I have a couple chats in here. Anybody have an easier time on one side or the other? Yeah. Did anyone start having that little bit of a little bit of anxiety when you had to breathe out and then hold. No, everyone did well with that. <laughs> That's where a lot of people are like, nope, I can't do that. It is very relaxing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone feel that it got easier to go from right to left? There was one side clogged up at the beginning and as you went through it opened it up. So one of the things too is that um, breathing through your right and left is some people actually use it, you know, even like thinking for relaxing them and helping them with their digestion. So some people will rev their body up um, before they start eating by holding once, uh, yeah, holding the left side of the nose. So they're breathing through their right. And that still do some slow breathing through the right nostril before a meal. And then after a meal, get in the habit of breathing through on the left to relax everything so then your body can digest better. So it's, you can really kind of play around with it. One of the books that I absolutely, I know I brought it up here. I, I adore this book. Here it is. Got it. Is this book. And I don't think Lori's on it, but she mentioned it. Vaughn, you've read this book, right? Yeah. So it's called Breath and it's by James Nestor. And it's on um, Audible as well. It's a great listen to. It's a really, really good. He, he makes science-y stuff really interesting and fun to listen to. But he gets more into um, the the controlling of breath and the breath holding. You put in there. You're awesome, Yvonne. I love you. 
Um, it's great. Like I could read this book again, a, a full second time, because there's so much information in here. It's all sciencey stuff, but he makes it so fun and interesting. And if you want to learn more about breathing um, and breathing techniques and some of the just amazing stories of what people have been able to do and control with their breath of, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you here about, have heard of the monks that could just sit in snow and without you know just in their shorts just a t-shirt and shorts and the snow would be melted around them and they do it all through breath they do it all through breath of controlling everything in their body through breath and so it's really amazing and what we can do but just a simple five second breath and a simple breathing through your right nose, left nose, using the oils to help open up not only just your nostrils, but to open up your lungs. Those are such simple everyday things that we could do that will help improve our bodies. It'll help lower our blood pressure. It'll help lower our stress levels. It'll help our digestion. It'll help our cognitive thinking, um, help us with our sleep, decreases how much snoring that we do. Um, asthma issues are really helped just by simply spending two minutes a day, five minutes a day on concentrating on our breath. So I hope this just got you some aha moments some things that got you thinking that's really interesting. I want to learn more about that. And um, I hope this helped you in some way. So I'm going to end it there. It's getting late and I want to, uh, I, I made it under an hour. So that's pretty good. <laughs> you did great. I'm going to go ahead and stop the 